Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. This time we're continuing with the Expanse series that was written by James S. A. Corey, who are Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. This is the third book in the series and it's called Abaddon's Gate. And for the first two books, there will be a link to the playlist in the upper right corner. And with that, let's get into Abaddon's Gate. Maneo John Espinosa, who is a 17-year-old kid from Ceres, where he is a part of the underground slingshot group. And they slingshot their way around the solar system without using engines. And that was what he was planning to do. He created a little ship called the YK, with which he was planning to slingshot his way through the ring. And he got close enough before the Martian and Earth forces could stop him. When he went through the ring, he decelerated almost instantly. And that killed him in his cockpit. He ended up being a red smear in his cockpit. The Rosinante is at series, And holding on the crew are in a casino enjoying themselves. When he goes to the bathroom, Detective Miller appears to him. Miller says he needs Holden's help. He says they know he finds things and they know that you help me. And suddenly Miller says, fuck, it happened and disappears. Two days later, Holden and the crew found out what happened. Someone had gone in one side of the ring and not come out the other side. Carlos Sidebaca, better known as Bull, had Fred Johnson come to see him in his room. Fred was there to tell him that he was going to be third in command of the behemoth instead of second in command as originally planned. And that was for political reasons because they needed to have a belter in charge and a belter as second in command. So Ashford was going to be the captain and Michio Pa was going to be the exo. They were going to take the behemoth, formerly the Narvo, to the ring. They wanted to make sure that Earth and Mars treated the belt with respect. So Fred is sending Bull to make sure that the mission succeeds. He doesn't trust Ashford to do it right. In Baltimore, Maryland, on Earth, Clarissa Mao goes into the back of a gambling house to get her new identity as Melba Cor. Travin, the man in charge who thinks that she is there to make money from the ring, tries to blackmail her into becoming a partner. He was killed along with his two bodyguards when she activated two implants at the roof of her mouth. The implants gave her extra strength and speed. She doesn't plan on making any money. She plans to get to James Holden and humiliate him and then kill him in revenge for what happened to her father. On Europa, Anushka Volovopov, Anna found out from her wife, Nono, that she was picked to be on the advisory council of the secretary general and she would be going to the ring. And Nono and her daughter would head back to Moscow where they would wait until Anna's work was done and she could join them. On the behemoth, Bull is not allowed to fix problems that could become catastrophic if they ever got into a battle. And he's also trying to get Samara, who is the chief engineer, to tell him who is dealing drugs on the ship. The behemoth is on its way to the ring. Back in series, Mars had filed against them in the courts on Earth and on Mars. They wanted the Rosinante back and now the Rosinante was locked down on series. That's when Monica Stewart came to them and said she wanted them to take her to the ring and she said she could get the ship the Rosinante out of lockdown and since they had no choice although they knew that they were being manipulated they took that contract. Clarissa as Melba is under Sorisia and that is a UN maintenance ship. It goes around doing maintenance on the UN Navy ships. It is now docked with the Siang An, which is a Navy destroyer, and Clarissa and her team are on it doing maintenance. 
she plants a bomb under Siang An and then she gets in contact with the sound man that is part of the reporter's team that is under Rosanante and he tells her that the package was delivered and that package will allow her to get into the Rosanante remotely where she plans to broadcast a message that will look like it came from Holden and that message will take credit for the bombing of the Siang An. The message will say he did it in the name of the OPA. She will kill him once his reputation is destroyed. While Anna is on the UN battleship Thomas Prince headed for the ring, Bull and the behemoth found a drug dealer and spaced him. On the Rosanante, the reporters are digging into the crew's background and annoying them, especially Amos. So Holden has to do all the interviews to keep them away from his crew. And Naomi is beginning to notice that there's something wrong with the calm system. Meanwhile, under Cerisia, Ren, who is Melba's second, found evidence of the bomb she placed under Siangun, and so she had to kill him. All the players are at the ring, and they have pretty much figured out that the ring is a wormhole gate. And that's when the UN destroyer Siang Un blew up. Melba's killing of Ren was causing her control to slip because she liked him and he was nice and helpful to her. She left the Thomas Prince and went back to the Cerisia and from there made contact with the Rosinante, taking over its calm systems and triggering the explosives in the Siang Un from there. Then she sent the broadcast through the Rosinante's calm systems. When the message came out from the Rosinante seemingly showing Holden claiming credit for the bombing and claiming the ring for the OPA, on the behemoth, Bull quickly convinced Captain Ashford to fire off a missile at the Rosinante to show the Martians and the Earthers that they had nothing to do with it. And when they fired off the missile, the entire ship went dark, proving that Bull was right in wanting to enhance and reinforce the weapons on the behemoth. On the Rosinante, Holden and crew saw when the broadcast was going out, leaving their ship. They also saw when the behemoth fired a missile at them. And they saw when the behemoth went dark that the Martians began guiding the missile to them. So they had no choice but to enter the ring, making sure to go in just below the speed limit. Captain Ashford then ordered that the behemoth go into the ring after holding under Rosinante. Bull tried to get the XO par to take down Captain Ashford, but she refused. So they headed for the ring with the Martians and the Earthers threatening to shoot them if they try. And on the Thomas Prince, Anna and the other clergy have asked that the Martians and the Earthers follow the behemoth into the ring instead of shooting at them. When the Thomas Prince asked for a volunteer maintenance crew to come with them when they go into the ring, Melba volunteered. In the slow zone, as the other side of the ring is called, on the Rosinante, Amos finds a transmitter that was causing all the problems with their weapon system and calm systems. After Holden threatened to space Monica and her entire crew, Cohen, who is her sound engineer, admitted that he was paid to plant that transmitter. He didn't know the name of the person that paid him, but he drew a picture and to hold it, it looked like Julie Mao. So Holden decides he needs to go to the space station that sits in the middle of the slow zone because everything seems to have been sending him there. After Holden left to go to the alien space station, Bull on the behemoth called Naomi under Rosinante and made a deal to take Monica and her team off of the Rosinante. Holden got into the station and immediately saw Miller and while they're talking, Miller was surprised to learn that Holden had seen him before, that he's been appearing to Holden over the past year. Holden had jumped to the conclusion, as he normally does, that 
Miller was the one that orchestrated everything to get him into the ring and into the station. He was shocked to find out that Miller didn't have anything to do with it. Miller didn't even want him to come into the ring or the station in the first place. The Marshal Marines got into the station and began coming after Holden. And just then, some alien creatures came and faced off with them. They began shooting at the alien creatures and they killed one of the Marines. And they used the Marine's body to repair the one, the area that was damaged. And then Miller told Holden that this is bad because the station now knows that something moving as fast as a baseball could be dangerous and it's gonna slow everything down. And when it does, it does it instantly. So a lot of people are gonna die. When the station slowed things down in the slow zone, a lot of people on the Thomas Prince was killed and Melba is trying to figure out how to get to the Rosinante so she could blow it up to keep the evidence of what she was doing from getting out. Anna and Tilly who survived on the Thomas Prince saw the picture of the woman that Holden said caused the problems and she recognized her as being on the Thomas Prince and Tilly recognized her as being Julie Mao's younger sister, took care of them when they were babies. So Anna set out to find her. Since the behemoth was moving the slowest, it survived the best, but there were still casualties and Bull was paralyzed from the chest down. Bull figured out a way to get all three groups together. He would spin the behemoth's drum so that he could create the gravity that they all needed. Using a stolen mech suit, Melba left the Thomas Prince and snuck on to the Rosinante. On the Rosinante, the first person she runs into is Naomi, and they got into a fight. And in the fight, she crushes Naomi's shoulder. And as she was about to kill her, Anna, who had also stolen an EVA and followed Melba on to the Rosinante, tasered her just before she could kill Naomi. Melba recovered as Anna was bandaging Naomi. So Anna and Naomi ran. Naomi passed out, so Anna pulled her into a vacuum suit storage locker where she hid with her. Melba followed them, but then the mech suit ran out of power. So Melba began trying to break through the locker door with her bare hands, using her enhanced strength, but she passed out. Anna then sedated her, tied her to a chair, and contacted the behemoth and spoke to Bull. Captain Ashford figured out what Bull was doing, trying to get everybody on board the behemoth. And he threw a fit and physically attacked Bull. He was so angry. But they restrained him. And finally, they removed him as captain and put Pa in his place. Holden was taken by the Martian Marines to the ship, the Humarabi. He explained everything he knew to Captain Jakandi. They put him in a cell and Miller made an appearance. And Miller told him that they need to show the station that they are not a threat. And if they can do that, then he will be able to get the lockdown lifted. But if he gets the lockdown lifted, that means all of the gates will be opened. And if there's something on the other side of those gates, it will come true. And since he's just a machine, the humans have more to lose than he does. They put Melba in a cell on the behemoth and they brought Tilly to see her. And that's who she considers Aunt Tilly because she took care of her when she was a kid and she confessed everything. And Tilly told her that they found her friend, meaning Ren, where Clarissa had stashed his body. Naomi, Alex and Amos were all on the behemoth and they were gonna be okay. Bull tried to get the Martians to give holding to them, but the Martians refused and he came up with an idea to get them to surrender holding. Bull's plan worked. He gave the Martians a reason to surrender holding while saving face. One of the first people that holding met when he got into the behemoth was Anna. She took him to see his crew and she got them to agree to say nothing about what Clarissa did because she wanted Clarissa to get a fair trial and she wouldn't get one if she 
was tried by the military. She's also doing it as a favor to Tilly. Father Cortez manages to free Captain Ashford and he convinces Clarissa to join them. Their goal is to destroy the ring to keep any more humans from coming through because they feel that is the best way of saving the human species. Bull found out that Ashford got free and he warned Captain Pa and Sam and Sarge and each side was now getting ready for a little war in the behemoth. Father Cortez is trying to get Anna on his side. He told her of their plan to destroy the ring. Naomi got a hold of Sam and Sam led them to safety and she asked them to help Bull. And that's when Holden told them that the station has the power to cause suns to go supernova. Ashford figured out that Sam was delaying converting the communications laser into a weapon and killed her. So the fight developed in two places. Communications where Monica was doing her broadcast and engineering. And in the midst of this, Ashford had the drum shut down to stop it from spinning. And because Ashford's side was beginning to win, they now had to go and attack the command deck. And that would be up to Holden and Naomi. Anna convinces Clarissa to open up the doors and the command deck. Clarissa manages to stop Ashford from firing the laser. And at the same time, Miller appeared to hold in and they both appeared to be on a planet. It was a planet that was in the station's catalog and Miller took them there so that he could have some time to get the station to unlock the gates and come off of lockdown. With the gates now open, humans can go anywhere within the system. But Miller tells Holden he needs a ride because he needs to find out what happened to the civilization that built everything. Bull sacrificed himself, buying Holden and crew time to get to the command deck. Clarissa had also managed to shut the power down in the command deck and she got shot by Ashford. With Holden and crew in control of the command deck, the fighting was over. Ashford had got wounded in the fighting. Annie negotiated with Holden to have him take Clarissa to Luna on the Rosamante because she felt that was the only ship where she would get there alive. In return, Tilly would buy the Rosamante from Mars and gift it to Holden and the crew. A Martian team was going to stay in the slow zone and do a survey on the gates now that they were all open. On the way back to Luna, the crew of the Rosinante began treating Clarissa more and more like a member, and Amos was making her his assistant. In the epilogue, Annie sends a message home. She is bringing Tilly along to Moscow to see her family and to introduce them. It'll take a month of traveling to get back to Earth. Cortez came to see her, and he told her that Esteban had lost the vote, so he is out as Secretary General of the UN. Nancy Gao is the new Secretary General, and he thinks that Ava Sorella was the one who engineered the whole thing. Anna tells him that she wants her daughter to inherit all of the planets that are in the rings, and Cortez tells her that she should remember that whatever the future, it is the future that she, Anna, chose for her. And that's how the book ends. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening and do me a favor and subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell, drop a comment, give us a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.